Hey, what's going on folks? My name is Chris and in this video, I'm going to share with you guys an alert system that I created using Sierra chart, which is a trading software and number two, Telegram, both their APIs, their bot API, as well as their Telegram database library. So I'm going to show you guys the alert system and I'm going to show you how fast these alerts are happening. What I wanted from this video from you guys, all I want is that you watch the video in its entirety and just give your feedback. Let me know what you think of this. If you think that it's something that you could see yourself using potentially with some of your coaching customers or even as an alert system where traders can follow your every move. In another video in the future, I'll tell you guys about the listener, which is another arm to this, which can essentially create automated trades or trade exactly based on the signals sent by the sender. So let's look at the sender here in this video right now. And honestly, if I titled it medium speed trade alert, no one would click on the friggin' video. So go ahead and give a like on the video if you want to see some super fast trade alerts. All right. My name is Chris, aka Varillo Trading, aka Boss Boy Gains Boy the third. So click on the video, click on the like. And if you want to support me, it's very simple. Check out my stock broker down below. First link in the description, just click on the link to check out interactive brokers because I made some good tutorials on them and they hit me up and be like, yo, we want to give you a link. <laughs> so check them out. That's all you have to do is click the link. Thank you. Let's get to it over here on my screen. All right, we're looking at this market skyrocketing up into the close here and it is the S&P 500 futures. Now I'm going to go into the study settings of the chart and we can see we have two studies here. One of them is VTCR chart telegram bot sender. The other one is VTCR chart telegram client sender. That's because I actually have two interfaces to telegram. One of them uses their bot API. The other one uses the actual client API. I'm going to show you how the client API works because it requires authentication, meaning that you actually have to log into your telegram account before this can work to send alerts. Now I'll show you what happens. Uh, you're going to see the alerts appear on the right side of the screen right there. So I will click to put an order. Okay, we've put an order and we have new trade order appear on both of them. Now I will cancel it and it has been canceled. Now, if you look very closely to which one gets sent first, it's always the client one that gets sent first. So the, the top one here, that's my Telegram account that I've logged into. And the bottom one is a bot. The advantage with the bot API is that it's a little bit um, easier to work with for the average person, whereas the other one uses their Telegram database library, which is this, which is actually building a Telegram client um, as a program. OK, so that's what I've done. I've built a Telegram client inside of Sierra chart. So let's go ahead and just show you a couple more examples. So I'll just place the order and we have an alert. Now I'll move an order. We have parent order modification. Another one. OK, how about canceled parent order canceled? OK, how about place an order and then fill the trade? And now we have new long position. And then we had target order filled just there in long position closed because the target was so close, so close from the entry. Um, so basically we got all these alerts, you know, new long position, target order modified, stop order modified, as well as target order filled, long position closed. And that was it. It happened so fast. You can rewind the video if you need to. Um, so I'll just do a couple more examples. Sell order right there. Um, modify it. And you can see they just happen so fast. Um, right now, I don't have the study set to update always, meaning it's only updating whenever the actual chart gets an update. Um, rather than updating based on the chart update interval of the chart, which would be like something like 50 times per second. So we have again, new long position right here, and I will modify the target target order modification right there. And it looks like we might get stopped out here. Um, so again, stop order filled, long position closed. There we go. Alerts happened immediately. 100% asynchronous operations. Please say the word asynchronous five times in a row if you like this video and comment below the word asynchronous if you enjoy this content. So I'll show you basically some of the input settings. It's actually quite uh, simple for the bot sender. I'm going to have to block this out, but the top input here is actually the uh, telegram bot token that you get from bot father when you create a bot. So you put your bot token here in the first input and you should never share that with anybody because if you do share that with somebody, if somebody determines your bot token, they can control your bot. OK, so you don't want that. So when you get a bot token from bot father on Telegram, you keep this private. The second thing is the chat ID to send the messages to. In this case, uh, I'm also going to mute that out because that's my personal chat ID for one of my Telegram accounts. Um, so you put the chat ID there. Um, you can also send. I also tested it for groups. It works perfectly sending it to groups, private groups. I haven't tested it with um, 
the channels inside the groups yet, but I'm sure it should work fine. And then there's another setting regarding subscribing to position updates, which I didn't show you because I haven't configured it to show position updates. Um, the Telegram client sender is pretty much the same in terms of the inputs um, that we get, except that we do get the option to log out of Telegram if the user wants to actually log out of the Telegram uh, instance. So what I'm going to do now is demonstrate the authentication. Basically, you log into your Telegram account in Sierra Chart through a dialog box prompt. And you only have to do that once, one time, because after that, it gets saved in an encrypted file in the um, directory of the program, which is in the Sierra Chart data folder. So I'm in my directory for uh, Sierra Chart, basically Sierra Chart data. and. At the very bottom, you can see there's a folder named TDLib. This is the folder that contains info about our active login sessions or any saved chat data that we have regarding our TDLib uh, session, our Telegram client session that we've created. And you can see the files are extremely small. It's like one or two megabytes or three megabytes in this case. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and delete these files because right now we have an active logged in session and I haven't coded anything in this study uh, for how to log out of the client manually. So I'll just go ahead and delete these for now. So I'll delete them and we can't delete them obviously because Sierra chart is open. So I'm going to close Sierra chart first. Okay. Now that I've closed Sierra chart, another thing you can do is in telegram over here in show all sessions under the privacy and security settings in telegram, you'll see the open session you have, and it will say the name of the program. I'm not going to go into this menu because it has too much info. I'm going to have to block out on the screen, but what I will do, is I will remove the session from my active sessions here. Just to let you know, again, it's a prototype and in the future, the logout will be supported without having to do any of this. Okay, so now that I've deleted that, I've opened Sierra chart another time and I'm waiting for it to open. Okay, and we get a dialog box prompt right here to enter our Telegram phone number. That's because the study is already on the chart. Okay. And uh, we're also seeing this message log, which I can uh, disable for now. I'll just remove that. Okay. So this is a modeless dialogue, meaning that we can click anywhere else. It doesn't affect anything. The visual is not fully completed, but it just gives you an idea. So what you need to do is you need to enter your phone number and then um, it's going to send you a code on your Telegram account, which you will get on your mobile phone or wherever you use Telegram. And none of this data is saved anywhere except for in those actual encrypted telegram files that saves info about your session. Um, but I'll give you an example. Now I'll type in my phone number and I'll block it out obviously. And it also doesn't matter if you put spaces between the numbers, you can actually type letters and it won't pick up the letters. It's only going to pick up the numbers in this case. So I'll go ahead and select. Okay. All right. Now we get another prompt with the same pretty much dialog box, except we need to enter the code in this case. And I just use the same dialog box for both of them. But in the future, obviously, it'll look better. It'll look different. Now, Telegram has sent us a login code. I already got it, it took a second and I'm going to enter the login code here and I'll press OK. And now we are authenticated. And on Telegram, you should see a message saying new login, dear, whatever your name is, we detected a login onto your account from a new device at this time. And then it'll tell you the name of the device and the version of Telegram uh, database library. Okay, so now we're logged in and we're good to go. So we're, that's how we authenticate it. And like I said, once it's authenticated, you don't ever, ever, ever have to do that again on the same device. But the way Telegram works is Telegram has a session cookie that you set that says uh, log me out after a certain amount of time. So I'm sure there's a default number set there. Like if you don't log in after six months, it'll close a session off. So let's go over some of the features here, guys, uh, for this study. Let's talk briefly about the two programs we're using. The first thing is obviously Telegram is an extremely lightweight and fast cloud messaging program. Um, and it offers a robust API with basically the full Telegram functionality. In this case, all I'm doing is sending a message, um, but there's a lot more behind the hood of Telegram than sending messages, as most of you guys know that. The performance of sending a message is extremely good so far, and I'm using the full functionality of Telegram through their client API. The second thing is we're talking about Sierra Chart here. I'll tell you briefly about Sierra Chart. It's an extremely fast and lightweight trading program, and it's used by many futures traders, and they recently included support for stock market data, um, and they're basically 
industry leading in a lot of aspects like their volume by price indicators and their um, footprint charts and all that. Now, one thing CR chart has that their everyday users don't really know about is that they actually have a very robust API where you can access very minute details about your trade orders and market data as well. So it's a very good API and you can access all the attached order data. And the way that I'm you know, getting this, the way I'm able to send alerts about order modifications, parent orders being canceled, attached orders being filled is because with the CR chart API, their Axel, they call it the advanced custom study language and interface. It's relatively easy to construct logic around uh, automated trading and stuff like that, okay? And CR chart is just a very fast program. Uh, the other thing you can do is um, the way the study works, in this case, it's only on one chart. But if I send a trade alert on a different symbol, for example, I'll send one on this symbol right here. Um, you can see we also get the alert for that symbol. So it supports multiple symbols. It supports any symbol, basically. In this case, I put an order on NQ there. And there it is. Okay. So I'll cancel that. So it's always good to, to have access to multiple symbols for traders that, you know, they trade multiple symbols at the same time, or let's say they're automated trading multiple symbols at the same time. Okay. All these requests are completely asynchronous and they do not interrupt the primary operation of the Sierra chart program or any program that it will operate in. Um, as a trading software. In this case, it's actually operating as a DLL inside of Sierra Chart, so it's actually 100% important that they need to be asynchronous requests. Comment down below asynchronous if you think this video is pretty cool. I just wanted to say the word asynchronous to be honest with you. And then the last and final thing about this is that in this video, I've only showed you the sender. Now, there's actually a listener that goes along with the sender and it works hand in hand with the sender. And the point of it is to listen for the alerts sent by the sender and perform the automated trading operations that essentially matches the exact orders and the exact actions that the sender is taking. Now, this has already pretty much been worked out. It's not completed because honestly, I just wanted to get your guys take on this. If you guys find this interesting, if you find you could use this, let me know. Send me an email at vtrading.contact at gmail.com and maybe we can talk about it. But right now, this is not available to the public. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, click here to check out more content similar to this and click down here to watch a playlist full of trading related videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.